and we're down at Brookvale Oval for the clash of uh, arch rivals, Manly and Cronulla. Cronulla, the very much junior of the two clubs, and uh, they are not forgetting their clashes with Manly in grand finals easily. In 1973, they were denied their first crown, and then again in 1978 in that memorable final series. Cronulla Sutherland take the field today without Steve Rogers, who's out injured, and suspended as Steve Neen. But one of the more important players in any rugby league side is their hooker, and a man in his first year in Sydney League is giving them a 50% share of possession as Barry Pearson. And you come up against Max Krillich for the first time here at uh, Brookvale today, Barry. First time this year, eh? Yeah. I have hooked against uh, Max a couple of times previously, and we've come out about even each. You each haven't time. had much luck as far as prop forwards are concerned, Barry. It's sort of been a chopping and changing year for you, but I notice you've had Paul Kahn back for a couple of weeks now. We have had a couple of changes, Ray, but um, Paul's back this week, and hopefully we've worked a couple of things out of training, and um, like it's just a matter of getting used to a uh, new pack, new second rows, new locket. Like it's not just um, your hooker that wins the ball. I think it's your whole pack of forwards and your half pack. It's a combination, and we're hoping that combination will get th get us through today. With me is Russell Gartner, and there's some uh, pretty good players amongst those fellows out today. Yes, Ray, there are uh, all of them seasoned internationals, but uh, I'm sure we've got a lot of confidence in the reserves that have come up. Yeah. Uh, all have played, uh, apart from Ricky Chisholm, all have played a number of first grade games, and Rick proved last week what a valuable asset he is. And Steve Cray has played a lot of first grade games, and he's a very tough player, so we're very happy with the replacements. You're missing the partnership with John Dorohy, Russ? Yes, uh, it's unfortunate that injury to John, but uh, we have to have John back in four weeks. He's had the clearance, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting back with him again. Manley's got a special reason for wanting to win this one today, I'm told. That's right, Ray. It's, uh, it's old Rube Hudson's 80th birthday, and uh, he's been around for oh, longer than the sand on Manly Beach, so we'd ve very dearly like to win this one today. Rube Hudson's the bloke that lets us in the dressing rooms when we come down here to do television matches and what have you. Only when we win, mate. When we lose, you're flat out getting in anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So there's the scene down here at Brookvale for tonight's big game, brought to you by Tooth & Company. It's a big one, Manly and Cronulla Sutherland. And the referee for the match here at Brookvale is John Gosher. And there's the Manly side on your screen with... In the side, in number 11. Manly without the likes of Graham Eady, Alan Thompson, Les Boyd, John Dorohy and Steve Martin. They're locked forward for this match, Paul Horton. Yes, well, uh, young Horton is certainly a real workhorse and it's uh, not too often that any other player tops his work rate in defence. Uh, Manly's coach Alan Thompson has also involved Horton in many of Manly's set plays and it's certainly been paying dividends. Cronulla side going onto the field without Steve Rogers and Steve Neen. And second row forward Kurt Sorensen is always a danger. Yep. There's a little fellow who in 1973 was captain coach of the Sharks when they went down to Manly in the grand final here in Sydney Town. Now coaching Cronulla Sutherland. So it's Cronulla Sutherland running right to left on your screen in Channel 10's big game brought to you by Tooth & Company. The company behind Rugby League right throughout Australia, right behind Channel 10 League as Miller puts play down deep inside the Manly 22 line. Coming away is the wing free quarter Jim C in his second season in Sydney League. Barry Pearson striking for the ball and a penalty going to Manly. Indication from John Gosher is that, in fact, the hand was used in the raking of the ball. I thought maybe it was for premature striking by Pearson. Wind shuttle playing at fullback takes the line kick. So the free place kick will be taken by Max Krillich, 10 metres his side of the halfway. Beautiful day here at Brookvale. As Steve Cray, the replacement for Terry Randall, takes it up and over the halfway mark. A little jab in the... Uh, in the chest from one of the Sorensons, and here's Max Krillich getting the pass away, and Ray Brown plays it. Halfway line on your screen. Ian Thompson, dummy on the run round to Krillich. That's Paul Vorton, red-headed lock forward for Manley. Greg Pierce, the tackler. Ian Thompson. That's Chisholm. Bruce Walker. Cop one on the chin from Greg Mullane. Referee Gosher giving a penalty to Manley. There was very little in that, believe me. Still, there's a lot of importance in, uh, as far as both sides are concerned out here this afternoon, isn't there? When you consider that Manly sitting on 14 points and Cronulla only two points behind on 12. Uh, both, well, Manly, of course, severely weakened, but uh, Cronulla missing uh, this classy centre, Steve Rogers. Well, that's almost an unforgivable error. 
the Rosswind shuttle failing to find touch Chamberlain plays it out to Cox it's gone to Pierce now to Khan and Genghis as he's called tries to brush off the tackles from Manley but he's safely held Pearson is the dummy half that's Pierce Cox short ball Gartner coming up fast but referee Gosher is ruling a scrum should go down Yes, it was a knock-on in the play of the ball. Uh, uh -huh. Paul Kahn is a very key player, though, here this afternoon, as far as Cronulla is concerned, particularly if he's able to, uh, or if he is in that mood that uh, enables him to take that first pass, hit the manly defence and unload, because there, he is a very, very clever ball player and a player that uh, Kurt Sorensen in particular could feed off. Manly ball, clean heel. Windshuttle into the back line, tidied up immediately by his opposite number, Rick Burke. Out to Vorton, working blindside. And uh, Dudman and Kurt Sorensen make the tackle. Again, they work blind through Ray Brown. It's with Bruce Walker and the neatly tackled by Greg Pierce, number 10. Cray and DeMitton pulled down there by both Greg Pierce and Dane Sorensen. They're just outside the 22 line on the far side of the field from Chisholm out to Meredith. Meredith calls on Boo. That's him with the ball, but he's put down quickly by Chris Gardner. Meredith dummy half. Chisholm now. Got the kick in that went straight up the backside <laughs> of Ian Thompson. <laughs> and it's Cronulla Sutherland. That couldn't be called a charge down, that's what you call a backside down. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that happen before. And so it's uh, played by Sorensen. Blindside to Khan. Very, very good player on his day, and he's done very well to take play down. About seven or eight metres onto the manly side of the halfway mark. That's Ozzie Welsh. Now Cox. Pierce. Dudman. Blonde-headed lock forward. Tackler is Horton. Over the top in 13, Ian Thompson. Cox again. Halfway line on your cameras. Miller and Burke. Burke now up the centre. Makes the break. Got the pass away to Gardner. It's gone under Mullane. Inside the 22. He beat the tackle of Chisholm and he'll score. Beating Paul Horton. And Russell Gardner prevents him coming any further around. Some fragile defence from uh, Manley, but it was a good try by Quinella. Scored by Greg Mullane. Yes, well, it certainly was a top try, and we know what a fine player Mullane is. He's certainly taken the opportunity since he's been in first grade. He positioned himself well. I thought he had his winger clear on the outside as well. But from the time that uh, young Dudman made the break, he gave it, uh, slipped it across, and there's Mullane coming in now. He was able to break that tackle by Chisholm, get away from Paul Vorton, and uh, certainly a top try, and it's the first real opportunity that Quinella have had with the ball. There's the head-on replay. That was the bust that really mattered. Rick Burke, not put down. And then it was a good pass from Chris Gardner. Chisholm should have had Mullane. There's no two ways around it. And it was just lack of pace from Paul Vorton. And uh, Russ Gardner, he gets some marks for coming in and preventing Mullane going any further around. Now, the attempt at conversion has been taken. It was unsuccessful. Dane Sorensen, incidentally, took the conversion attempt. Greg's, uh, Greg Cox suffering with a pulled muscle in the thigh and um, obviously uh, it must be fairly serious otherwise he would have been taking the goal kicking. Rick Burke now through Pearson Cox. This is Dudman. Dudman making another break for his side. Pulled down by Vorton. Dummy half is Barry Pearson. Out to Cox. Pierce on the inside. Khan. Khan looking on the inside but Chisholm made the tackle that time. Pearson dummy half. That's Dane Sorensen. Across Greg Cox. Out to Gavin Miller. Miller stepping. Away from a couple. Away from three. Uh, gets the pass away in the fourth tackle. It's Paul Kahn who goes up and turns it back to Kurt Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen's over the halfway. Shrugging off some very feeble manly defence before losing the ball in the tackle. It appears as though Cronulla may still have it. They have. And referee Gosa says, play on. It brings a roar from the crowd as Gavin Miller goes down towards the Manly 22 line before Vorton and Chisholm are there with Ian Thompson to prevent any further attack. Last tackle, Dane Sorensen. And the scrum will go down about five metres out from the Manly 22. I certainly like the look of the Cronulla attack at this stage, particularly Paul Kahn. Um, he's been a player that I've been critical of for his lack of... Um, effort in attack in particular but uh, today in these early stages anyhow he's looking for the ball and he's going to create uh, plenty of problems for this manly defense if he continues in this vein manly getting another scrum win and uh, a bad pass by chisholm but recovered by vorton wind shuttle dummy half decides to take it out himself but gavin miller makes the tackle so now it's steve cray 
Krilic to, um, to uh, dummy half. They'll work blindside here probably. Wait for by Pearson, given a penalty as Manley. And so it's Winchattle to hopefully find the line this time. Seven metres out from his quarter. You're watching Channel 10's big game. And we'll bring you again the Australia-New Zealand second test next weekend. As Chisholm gives it through to Meredith. Swings it back blindside to Ray Brown, but Kurt Sorensen's there. And he and Pearson make the tackle. Ian Thompson. Ian Thompson with a good run, but he was one out. No he support. Was, he was looking for support as well. Wasn't there, Keith? No, it wasn't. And that's a failing with this man, he said. They're getting plenty of the possession. They get pl plenty of the ball with scrums and penalties. But uh, at this stage, there's a lack of um, enthusiasm in backing up anyone that's likely to make a break. So Ross Winchattle, right on the halfway mark to kick for touch. Four penalties to nil at the moment in favour of Manley. When Shuttle's kick this time is better. And that's a good kick. The free place kick will be taken just outside the Cronulla 22. On the burst is Cray. And straight ahead he gains 10 metres. Good run. No going round corners with Steve Cray. One way up and down. Brown. Walker. Walker won our man of the match here from Electronic Sales and Rentals and National. The last time we were down at Brookvale when Manley thrashed eastern suburbs that's ray brown tackler was greg pierce number 10 he cuts them down right around the bootlaces great advertisement for uh, for tackling ian thompson taken there by dane Sorensen and scott dudman meredith chisholm stepping a little blonde headed halfback he's gone right through coming on the burst is mooney but mooney can't take the pass Oh, that was a real good chance for Manley. Chisholm, he made an exciting burst inside the 22-way line and had he been able to pick up Tom Mooney, who was a little bit slow getting there, which isn't like Tom. He's normally in a perfect position. He's suffering a bit of injury too during the week. There was a doubt about him playing. Manley getting their fifth penalty of the match. His penalty is 5-0 their way. Scrums 2 0 their way, so Manley's really had uh, plenty of ball. They're down in the score line 3 0. On the 22 way line, Chisholm to take this penalty shot. He's 10 metres in. And it looks beautiful. Yes, it's there for two points. Cronulla Sutherland 3, Manley 2, where 11 minutes gone, first half in Channel 10's big game. There's the restart. Paul Vorton takes it out about 10 metres from his own 22. That's Cray. A gain of about 8 metres for him. And so back now for the kick by Winchuttle. It's the big kick down over the head of Rick Burke. Very safe fullback, capable fullback. And the tackler was Bruce Walker. Seven metres out from the 22. Penalty to Cronulla. Inside the five against Manley. So Dane Sorensen finding touch for his side. Almost on the halfway. And Barry Pearson takes the place kick. Dane Sorensen takes it up a few metres, uh, just a few metres more. Calling for it is Dudman to the left of play. That's him with the ball now. No gaining ground. It's two forwards up. They're going to use a third on the run round. A switch of play by Pierce and then put down by Cox. Knocked down, in fact, by Manley. And the tackle count restarts. And that man with the ball again is Dane Sorensen. Left of play is Pierce. Now Cox. Kurt Sorensen, a sharp little pass from Cox. Beautifully delivered. Kurt Sorensen plays it. Cox again. Pierce. Miller, and it's gone behind, but picked up by Welsh. And they're 10 metres onto the manly side of the halfway. Pierce behind him, dived on by Rick Burke. And he'll play the ball back to his captain, Greg Pierce. Gavin Miller uh, coming to the sideline as Miller. As uh, Sorensen takes it up. 
Pierce. Khan. Dummy on the run round. Back to uh, Dudman. And that's the end of six for Cronulla. Good defence by Manley. And this scrum in centre field to four. <coughs> well, Cronulla at the moment are out there minus Gavin Miller. Shuttle, but the pass was deliberately forward, says referee John Gosher. And uh, Cronulla Sutherland have made the change of Tony Graham. There he is limbering up. He's on the field of play. He's on the wing. Which in turn sends David Chamberlain in to play at 5-8. It's, uh, it's not a new role for Dave Chamberlain. Tony Graham, I think he did some time with St George, uh, Tony Graham, from memory. Very capable winger, very fast. And Kurt Sorensen, uh, Dane Sorensen, I beg your pardon, is going to take this kick for goal. He failed with the attempted conversion of the Cronulla try. And there's his attempted penalty. It's a long kick by Gia. I tell you what, it never left the line. Two points to Cronulla. They lead now by five points to two in so Chisholm to restart. Harking back to that penalty by Dane Sorensen, Keith Barnes, uh, as the doyen of goal kickers. <laughs> he didn't seem to use much effort about it. No, but from the moment he'd left his boot, you always knew it was a goal because, uh, you know, you just watch the goal kicker and if you see him casually turn his back and start walking back to the halfway line, you can tell that it's left his boot perfectly and uh, that'll certainly solve a lot of, or any problems that uh, maybe Tommy Bishop had in the goal kicking department because that was a perfect kick. Greg Cox plays it. It's with uh, Pearson on to Dane Sorensen. And plenty of manly men required to put him down. He's got to be put on the deck, Dane Sorensen. He's been uh, creating problems for a lot of other Sydney first-grade sides this year. And his prop forward partner, Paul Kahn, he must also be smothered up, as you can see. Steady down, Paul, steady down. <laughs> Kurt Sorensen back on the inside through Pierce. It's with Rick Burke. Burke now, the blonde-headed fullback. Up the centre, back it goes to Barry Pearson. He lost the ball in the tackle. It's been raked back and dived on by Manley. Referee Gosher was about to say, play on and six more to go, and then he realised that Manley had the ball. And they knocked it down, so it's a scrum. Ten metres on the Cronulla side of the halfway. Cox feeding. Same tunnel. In Manley's loose head. And the sound of the whistle of penalty to Cronulla Sutherland. Watch him, there's the referee. Feet across against Max Kravich. So the kick for the touchline is 12 metres away from the Manly 22. And the free kick taken by Pearson, given to Khan. Khan goes ahead five metres. Tackler was uh, Steve Cray with Bruce Walker and Ray Brown had a part in it. Now it's Dane Sorensen. Well tackled. The penalty to Cronulla, though. That's against Walker for being inside the five. Well, no, I beg your pardon. That isn't the ruling. The ruling, in fact, is that he was the... Uh, in that case, the dummy half, Bruce Walker. He was the acting halfback behind the marker, and he must stand behind the marker. In other words, he's penalised them for having two markers. Manly. And Dane Sorensen with another attempted penalty, and this one simpler than the previous. Now watch this. Minimum of fuss. Unfashionable. Hits it, lifts the head up, but he gets two points. <laughs> I tell you what, there's nothing unfashionable about him. He's very, very confident and very comp start. And it's with Kurt Sorensen. Greg Pierce. Cox. Khan. 
Dane Sorensen. Well tackled by Vorton. Burke. Khan. And they're about seven metres short of the halfway, Cronulla. Leading by seven points to two. Cox on the blind side. Looking for the touch. It's taking a left-hand turn. It might beat Winchardler. It does. And it'll be a scrum. Yes, yeah, some very creative play, too, by the uh, Cronulla halfback, Greg Cox. He's a very complete and astute footballer, Cox. And uh, his combination, though, out there this afternoon is very beneficial to, or his creative work, I should say, very, very beneficial to uh, Cronulla. Manly winning the scrum, and Chisholm, the man playing it. Meredith. Burr. And Greg Pierce makes the tackle. Walker. Down to the Manly quarterway line. Blind side. This is Ray Brown giving it to Cray. Ian Thompson calls for it. It's gone to Vorton. And it's about nine metres out from the Manly 22. This is the last tackle for them. Chisholm calls for it. But fed back to Windshuttle. He gets the kick in. Down to Rick Burke. And Burke goes up. Almost to the halfway mark. Cox a dummy half. Graham wants it. That's him. Picked up by Krillich. Dane Sorensen. Striding through a couple of tackles back to his brother Kurt. And he'll play it to Pearson. Khan. Pierce. Gardner. Lovely passing by Cronulla. Walk of the tackle. Well, he's got to be penalised. Penalty to Manly. And Rick Chisholm will take only his second kick at goal. He was successful with a penalty which came back uh, some ten minutes ago now. At the uh, 11th minute, in fact, he kicked his penalty. The try to Greg Mullane came after five minutes. This boy, Rick Chisholm, played his first match in the top grade last week at Henson Park and has scored in reserve grade this year 46 points from two tries, 19 goals and two drop goals. Last week against Newtown, he kicked two goals and a drop goal and therefore 51 for the season in both grades. As our cameras on ground level shoot back to the hill crowd, he hits it sweetly. That's two points. And the Eagles are back to seven points to four down now. JVC Cronulla Sharks. JVC, one of the sponsors, along with electronic sales and rentals of the Cronulla Sharks, with the controversial phone number on the front of their jumpers. It was a controversial issue when it was allowed. As Windshuttle does well for Manly. Krillich. a good gain of about 10 metres by Krillich. Real workhorse for Manly. He's a sea eagle through and through. And Steve Cray plays it now to Ray Brown. Back to Krillich. Back to Cray. Over the halfway. Looks for a runner. Picks up Chisholm. Chisholm chips over the head of Burke. Oh, he's going to score. He's only got a fall on it. Yes! Solo effort. What a great... Great try by the lad, Rick Chisholm. Well, listen to that crowd. They love that. Why wouldn't they? Oh, that's super football. This pass made it possible. And then he just did it all, this young lad. Watch this. The bounce almost too high for him. Up there, Kazali. Brilliant play, brilliant kick over the top, very well judged. As Ray said, he got a up a little bit high, but up he went. And uh, the crowd really erupted. Uh, they all rose off their feet. He's a very popular youngster out here, young Chisholm. And, uh, of course, this he gives, the, uh, gives him the opportunity now of piloting Manly to the front. And uh, if he's able to land this conversion, three, tries, three goals and a try, nine points. Boy, oh boy, that would be a moment in this young man's career that he'll never, ever forget. Not a big crowd, maybe about 10,000 here, but they're very, very, very much manly, very much behind this young lad, and what a great try.
and he kicks the goal. Manly, they lead by nine points to seven with Rick Chisholm getting a try and three goals for his team. I doubt that we've seen too many more individual tries as good as that one. Windshuttle filling a very big pair of shoes out there today. Graham Eady, of course, ineligible to play rugby league at the moment. Ray Brown, the Eagles are starting to make the ball do the work. Martin Meredith now, 10 metres out from his quarter way line. Manley leading by nine points to seven. Borton, Simon Booth taken by Mullane, given a bit of a facial massage. Touch judge goes in. The referee, though, has seen it all. And it's a penalty to Manley. Shuttle finding touch right on the halfway mark. Krillich taking the free kick. That's Steve Cray, the man who popped that little pass onto the stomach of Chisholm. Up goes McGiller, as they call him, Ian Thompson. Now to Chisholm. Krillich, the dummy, back to him. He comes back towards the centre, runs into Kurt Sorensen, who says, Come here, come here, you little thing. <laughs> it was Kurt who chased him to the try line before. He said, you're not getting away this time. It's Gartner now. This match, obviously, uh, robbed of some of its great talents. As Krillich, Krillich makes a bust for Manley. Down inside the 22. Good run by Krillich. This is the last for the Sea Eagles. Meredith, Chisholm, Gartner, wide and deep. Gartner still going. Up towards the 22, that'll be the end of six. Chisholm to feed. Manly nine. Cronulla seven. Penalty to Cronulla. That's against uh, Manly for collapsing the scrum. And I wonder would Dane Sorensen be ambitious enough from out there? There's a few, well, it's not a hair strong beat, of course, but there is a little bit of breeze in Cronulla's favour, and uh, he's having a good look at it. <laughs> uh, he's finding the line. So the free kick will be taken by Pearson just outside the Manly 22. Manly look like they'll go to Lemons, two points in front. Tony Graham. Cronulla now setting up their attack. Khan. And he's about three metres inside the quarterway line, playing it back to Barry Pearson, Greg Cox. Greg Pearce. There's been a shuffle up in the back play, but uh, it's with Kurt Sorensen, tackled right on the 22 by Paul Vorton. It's gone out to Cox. A short ball back to Dane Sorensen, and he's held up 18 metres away from the Manly line. It's out to Greg Cox. Chamberlain, Mullane, Burke. And Burke is taken by Ray Brown. He's having a top game, Burke, though. He's getting into the game uh, at every opportunity and making good ground. Certainly not on that occasion, though. Greg Mullane pops it back, hopes for the best. And Rick Burke takes the ball for Cronulla. That's the end of six. No gain in ground for Cronulla. Good defence by Manley. Put it on the back of his mind and uh, said, I'll talk to you chaps in a few moments' time, which he's done. Chisholm feeds. Penalty to Cronulla. He's called Krillich out. Feet across. And I suppose we must ask ourselves now, is there any chance that Krillich and Max Brown will change places? Because... Uh, Ray Brown. In a, Ray Brown, I'm sorry. In a game uh, earlier this season out here at, uh, at Brookvale Oval, we saw that situation arise where uh, Krillich and Brown did actually switch. Now, Keith, to add further weight to that suggestion, the penalty count is 9-8 in favour of Manley. But of the eight penalties Cronulla have received, five of them have been scrum penalties. Four against Krillich, one against Chisholm. Here's Dane Sorensen. I described it as an unfashionable kicking style. Keith Barnes disagrees, and there's two points there to prove that he's right and I'm wrong. So three goals out of five attempts today for Dane Sorensen, and three out of six when he kicked against uh, North Sydney. Rick Burke. 
he'll take Ozzy Welsh with him. That's him, the slightly built winger, but Burke's gone away from him and taken it about three metres out from the 22. Cox. Short ball by... Golly, those passes must be close to forward. Chamberlain takes it up about 10 metres short of the halfway mark. Played back to Pearson, given away to Cox. Calls on Gardner, that's him with the ball, and smothered by Mooney. Gartner lends assistance. And dummy half is Pearson. Dane Sorensen, picked up well by a big man. Nicely juggled in by Khan, given quickly to Chamberlain. Stepping neatly and then driven. Oh, gee, that was a tackle from Walker. Mightn't have looked so sensational, but he got his shoulder right in behind him and drove him into the ground. Rick Burke does well. Dane Sorensen takes it up to Steve Cray. Stands up. Pearson calling on Greg Pearce. Pearson tries to split them. That's the halfway line. And Paul Vorton, the tackler, with Martin Meredith. Through Dudman, Cox, long ball, calm. Here comes Sorensen. Kurt Sorensen, like a steamroller. Getting rid of the first tackle, but then running into Steve Cray. And it's Bruce Walker and Cray who actually make the tackle. Uh, the attack and the defence of both sides has uh, improved at least 50%. So we're right on half-time with the scrum just on the manly side of the halfway. Nine points all. Penalty to Manley. A penalty to Manley. I noticed a big smile come on young Chisholm's face then when he looked around and saw Gosha pointing uh, Manley's way for the penalty. I think it was a smile of a relief. Chisholm. Chip across the three-quarter line. Will the bounce favour Cronulla? No, it's Welsh! Welsh for Cronulla! He's off and running hard to the halfway on the inside. That's Dutman. He's still going, looking for support, finding Mullane across the paddock, out to Graham. Graham taken by Walker and tackled 11 metres on the Manly side. And that's half-time. What a half. Good football. 9-0 Manly and Cronulla in the big game brought to you by Tooth and Company. And the second half underway now with Rick Chisholm sending it down towards another Rick, Rick Burke. <laughs> They're out past the 22 Cronulla. We resume with the nine points all situation. And Greg Cox, Pierce. That's one of the Sorensons. I think it's Kurt. And I wouldn't tell you otherwise because I can't split them when they're running towards me unless one's got his socks up and one down. Normally it's Kurt with the socks down. Dudman. Wouldn't believe it. He's just gone back to position Kurt Sorensen and he's pulled his socks down now. <laughs> Greg Cox. Yes. With wind shuttle. Been shuttled across the top of um, Mullane, held by Cox and by Pearson. Played back to Mooney. The things that happen at a football ground. And uh, a penalty goes to Manley. That's against uh, Cronulla, infringing in the play of the ball. And Rick Chisholm with his confidence on a very, very razor sharp uh, high says, I'll take a shot for goal. So here's this lad getting length, got height, I like it. Yes, it's another two-pointer to the boy. Rick Chisholm has scored all Manly's points. They lead 11 points to nine now. 21 years of age, and what a day he's having, a memorable one. Well, Mooney got a hand of that. You mightn't believe it, but he did. And Mooney looks at Wind Shuttle as if to say, I wish you'd get out of the road, Ross, and let me. Yes, well, he's entitled to say it, isn't he? Yes. Because Wind Shuttle went right across in front of him. And then they both tried to uh, make out that referee Gosher had been struck down with the sun. <laughs> Very innocent look from Tom Mooney, but he knew he was wrong. Cronulla's ball, dangerous too, as Cox shows it with one hand and goes himself, the former Balmain player. He's over the line. I think it might be a try. No, he's short. He's ruled him short as Chamberlain pulls tacklers off Cox. 
It's gone back to Malayne to, uh, and then to Kurt Sorensen. Now they're about five metres out, Cronulla. And they're going to play this ball to Pearson. Might go himself, no. Kurt Sorensen's uh, got the pass away. It's down to Gardner and across to Dudman. Dudman trying to go himself. He's held about five metres out from the line now. Dummy half is Barry Pearson. Khan going to the right of play. That's Khan taking it within about three metres of the line now. Pearson again to dummy half. 11-9 in favour of Manley. As it goes out to Dane Sorensen, now to Greg Pearce. Rick Burke was going fast on the outside, picked up by Chamberlain, given to Dudman. Dudman's gone inside the 10. He's looking for support. The, uh, the defence is there. He's lost the ball. Picked up by uh, Pearson, but the referee ruled that it was a knock-on and a scrum about five metres from Manley's line. And how a simple elementary mistake there between Mooney and uh, Winchuttle could have cost Manley very dearly because Greg Cox must have been horribly close to getting over that try line. Scrum. Almost in front of the Manly uprights. Very important one. I didn't like the fear. Well, he's given the penalty to... <laughs> He's given the penalty to Manley. Did you think it was going the other way? I did. I thought it was an incorrect <laughs> feed, to be quite frank with you, Keith Barnes. There's the uh, the offenders, though, the Cronulla front row. Well, let me ask you the same question. Yes, I thought it was going the other way. <laughs> so Windshuttle fires for touch to clear this pressure from his own line. By the way, Gavin Miller stretched ligaments in the shoulder he'll be up for at least a couple of weeks the shoulder in a sling at this moment Gavin replaced very early in the match Ian Thompson one hander back to Vorton tackler was Pearson Krilich a dummy half Ian Thompson Chisholm back to Walker Walker gets it back to Meredith Good football, good attack, good defence from Gardner. There's a punch up in back play. They've come from all over the field in the back play now. Ooh. Tempo's really fraying out there. There's a bit of brotherly love there too. This is the um, incident that apparently started it all. Greg Pierce, was it, that caught one in the in the chin from uh, Ian Thompson. He ran into an elbow, it appeared. Dr. Maloof looking at Greg Pierce. He's uh, split his mouth badly. Tommy Bishop with Dr. Peter Maloof. I think Tommy said to the doctor, how quickly can you patch him up? 11-9 to the Manly Eagles. And Dane Sorensen from 40 metres out. It's got plenty of height, plenty of length, but it's offline. No change. Wind shuttle now. Manly playing with 13 players again, 12. A gamble being taken by Cronulla. They want their skipper back out there. He's gone to be stitched up, I would imagine. Bruce Walker, Manly with a golden opportunity to try and put more points on the board. Cronulla's best defender off the paddock and Manly throwing it about. But Cronulla defending stoutly as Booth gingerly plays the ball. Ian Thompson. 11 metres out from the 22. Brown. Walker. Walker's up to the halfway. That's Crilly Joe. Smothered by Dane Sorensen. She's a hard game, this one. Rick Chisholm. Hit by Cronulla. Down to Greg Cox. He dived to save that ball. Plays it back to Rick Burke. Burke stepping inside down to Rick Chisholm at the halfway Bruce Walker comes up in cover oh this match has just been excitement all the time since Chisholm scored that first half try Cox Khan popped away through the centres out the Chamberlain and David Chamberlain has held five metres on his side of the halfway I'll be surprised if Greg Cox doesn't start looking for that little chip over the top now because the Manly defence are getting them very quickly and getting very up very quickly out wide in particular with uh, Russell Gardner and, uh, and Simon Booth. Calm. Oh, forward pass, I felt. Kurt Sorensen tackled with it. Well, Greg Pierce is back on the field. That's the quickest repair job you've seen in a long time. Khan kicking down towards Mooney's flank. Windshuttle. 
calm the tackler. Mooney, outside the 22. Graham makes the tackle. Ian Thompson. Dummy half is Ray Brown. Chisholm, Meredith, Booth. Gardner makes the tackle. Number four, Mullane, I beg your pardon. Mullane in four, Gardner in three. Krillich playing it. Chisholm looking for the touchline. He'll find it. Yes, a good kick by the halfback. Oh, he's having a super game, isn't he, Keith Barnes? 11-9 in favour of Manley. Yes, he certainly is. Uh, everything is, uh, that he's done has worked out uh, wonderfully well. We haven't seen a great deal of Meredith, but on the occasions that he has decided to open up, he too has also found uh, uh, gaps in this Cronulla defence, but he seems to bide his time. Uh, Chisholm, uh, a remarkably um, cool, calm and collected and, and for a relatively inexperienced player, isn't he? Looks very mature out there. Gartner, taken by Gardner. One with a T, one with a D. Vorton, cut down by Dudman. Brown running blindside, taking Mooney with him. That's Mooney. Nine metres now, out from the 22 on Cronulla's end of the field. Cray, held by Dane Sorensen. Manley 11, Cronulla 9. 11 minutes gone, second half. Chisholm. Chisholm. Got a pass away along the ground, picked up by Ray Brown. Turned on the inside to Bruce Walker. He'll look for support. Tackled on the 22 by Graham. Vorton. Chisholm. Puts the bomb up. He can do anything, the kid today. It all seems to turn into gold. Rick Burke under pressure. Uh, took it and, and was quite amazed when nobody actually tackled him. Dane Sorensen. A few metres inside the 22. Pearson. Khan. And they're back on their own quarter line still. Cronulla. Trailing by two points. Dudman. Over the quarter. Only a metre or two. Pierce. Sorensen. Jesus. Kurt Sorensen to the halfway. Oh, well, that's got to be a penalty. He gave the ball to Ozzy Welsh. He bunched straight back into his hands. He knew what it was, but uh, I don't think he really wanted to give the ball to Welsh at the time. But he's a strong player, though. He's a strong player. He's made Peter. countless busts out here this afternoon. Unfortunately, at this stage, anyhow, uh, they haven't got any real results out of them. So often, though, Keith, do we see his uh, moves. Ray Brown on camera getting a bit of uh, quick repair work. So often do we see Kurt's moves break down at that last vital moment. He, yes, he, he shows the last up. pass badly, doesn't he? He's not able to determine and really finish them off. But by geez, the destructive runner. So Manley setting up the attack with Steve Cray. Big man. Straight ahead, as I've told you, Dane Sorensen and Greg Pierce making the tackle. Rick Chisholm working the play. Vorton going up the centre. And a swarm of sharks, or a pack of sharks, bring him down. Ten metres out from the line. Ray Brown, crab-wise, back to Walker! And Walker's tackled by Pearson. Seven metres away from the Cronulla line. It's gone across to Chisholm. He dummies to Meredith, steps on the... Oh, he's oh. oh! What it's a brilliant shot! Look at the kids <laughs> again! Look at Rick Chisholm! He is absolutely elated. The crowd have gone berserk. This manly crowd have gone berserk. A big right foot oh, and a big shit. left foot. And in he goes. Johnny Gibbs came back in reserves today and came back successfully, but this little fellow has had a blinder of a game. Ah, oh, gosh, what a superb individual try. There's John Dorohy on camera sitting alongside of Wayne Springall, and uh, good to see John Dorohy up and about, and he had a smirk on his face like a, like a cat in a fowl house. As Rick Chisholm just keeps putting these points on the board, 16 to 9, and they're all... Certainly, he uh, only just missed out on the Man of the Match award last week, and uh, he must have a fair chance at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> you are kidding. He, he can have it. He can have it. Even at this early stage, he can have it. 16 memorable points.
Yes, let's not forget there's 25 minutes remaining in this game. Oh, Keith, he'd have to bet I'm not talking over. about Chisholm, I'm talking about as far as Penelope are concerned. There's, six, there's 25 minutes remaining. OK, so it's with Ian Thompson. I can't remember being taken by an individual performance as much as I am by this lad today. Steve Cray now, playing it back to Max Krillich. Wind shuttle. Big kick. By Jove, it's found. No, it, it oh. bounced and took a turn on the inside. And Rick Burke takes it back. He's had a strong game for Cronulla. Rick oh, Burke, apart yeah. from that missed tackle, of course, but Chisholm uh, had him standing up, didn't he? By the way, we're still... Uh, Though you might not believe it, but with the journalist strike, the Dally M Awards, they've been, uh, well, placed in limbo for uh, the last few weeks. We've been keeping uh, points on the Dally M's. Um, simply, we haven't been able to publish them. Uh, but the Dally M Awards for 1980 are still very, very healthy and will culminate in a gala telecast at the end of the year when we'll know the Dally M team of 1980 with $30,000 in prizes to be distributed. Dane Sorensen, a front runner in fact in the Dally M's at the moment is Dane Sorensen. Greg Cox, Dudman. Well, wow, that's down to Manly. Meredith with the ball. Cronulla are starting to panic and why wouldn't you I suppose with 23 minutes to go and you're being carved up by one man. Max Krillich. That probably is an unfair statement. There's been some good performances in this Manly team, but Chisholm, his name has been firmly, firmly planted. That's forward, that's offside. That's a deliberate forward pass from uh, Ray Brown to Ian Thompson. He's put an indelible mark on the game, Rick Chisholm. And so Cronulla... We'll find touch on the, I was going to say on the old grandstand side, but it's only quite young. On the broadcast side, found touch, did Dane Sorensen. A free place kick will be taken by Pearson. Ozzy Welsh. Six metres out from the 22. Dudman. Cronulla, they need a try and a goal very quickly, I would think. Their confidence has been just blown apart. Greg Pearce. Greg Pearce, good football. That's Paul Kahn, taken, smothered. Two metres out from the line. Rick Burke was screaming on the inside. That's Rick Burke from dummy half. He's up over the line and can't get it down. Five metre scrum. That was a good combined piece of play there involving Greg Pierce and uh, Paul Kahn. Certainly a set piece. So, the scrum, a very important one. Cronulla, if they can win it, have got a good chance of getting in there. Penalty to them. Well, they can take their pick here. They, they'd probably be well advised to shoot for goal to bring them to 16-11. Very important kicks now as far as Sorensen are concerned and Cronulla. Here he is. Short run back. Or a sh oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Straight over the uh, over the maroon dot here at uh, Eagle Territory. Dane Sorensen. A new found art. And the Cronulla flags have got reason to be jubilant. And this man, Rick Chisholm, to restart. A try for him at the 29th and 45th minute. And he's kicked four or should I say, five valuable goals. Rick Burke. To me, the best player on the field for Cronulla. Uh, Rick Burke, maybe that is arguable, but uh, I've liked his performance. That's Dane Sorensen. He, he's had a top game. As he stands, Greg Pearce switches it to Chamberlain, then to Kurt Sorensen. And uh, he's brought down, and just as well, because Manly were looking a little bit brittle on this side of the field. Greg Mullane, 15 metres on their own side of the halfway, the Sharks. They're five points behind, and they're coming home. Khan, dummy to Dudman, gives it up to Rick Burke, and he, he's tackled in centre field, midway between the 22 and the halfway, their own end of the field. Khan, 
takes it up, gives it back to Dane Sorensen. He gets the pass back to Scott Dudman. Dudman is trying to go through. He's up towards the halfway mark. That's the end of six. Sutherland using a five-man pack with two standoffs virtually and that's a manly ball scrums by Joe there's a statistic that I uh, I'd lost um, track of the scrums decided have gone to manly 6-1 well Rick Chisholm is injured I just was a bit concerned that maybe there was an illegality in the tackle, but I don't think there would be from Greg Cox as Manley take the play down 10 metres away from the 22 with Steve Cray. Plays it back to Krillich, given up to Ray Brown, calling on Bruce Walker, dummies to him, gives it to Gartner, and Gartner beautifully tackled by Greg Pearce. Krillich, through Chisholm, or with him, steps, gets the pass back, Meredith, his partner in crime, back to Krillich. And Krillich, well, like a man possessed, has got rid of the ball through Horton to Ian Thompson. And Ian Thompson is held just outside the 22-way line. Manly 16, Cronulla 11 now. Out to Chisholm. A drop goal. It's high. <laughs> it's long. It's, it's a goal. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious me. What more can the boy do? He is a fanning genius, this kid. Scoreline 17-11. Penalties. Oh, gee, there's been some penalties in the match, 13 apiece. Manley's won another one. Well, Krillich is giving Pearson a nice uh, hiding in the scrums, isn't he? Tackled on the quarter line is Paul Vorton. Chisholm switches the point of the attack to Bruce Walker, who's, I thought, uh, I feel, has had a strong game. Bruce Walker. He's done all that's been asked of him. They're 10 metres short. Hello, a penalty to Manley. That's offside against Cronulla. Fair ruling against Pearson. Coming back from an offside position, involving himself in the play. We're 15 minutes out in Channel 10's big game. Scoreline Manly 17, Cronulla 11. Wednesday night in the Tooth Cup, we've got uh, Cronulla Sutherland and Canterbury Banks down. Cronulla and Canterbury, Wednesday in the Tooth Cup. And next Saturday, we've got Parramatta and Penrith for you. Parramatta and Penrith next Saturday. And uh, on that same weekend, we'll have the Australia-New Zealand Test match, as we did with the first Test last weekend. So Krillich taking the free kick. Steve Cray going ahead, gaining his usual 10 metres. <laughs> Ian Thompson. I was going to point out, had Cronulla... Oh, bit of indiscreet uh, play, and the play of the ball, Chisholm. Getting the pass away to Ray Brown, back to Paul Vorton, back to Ian Thompson, and he's felled there by Scott Dudman. But Manley are on the attack, they're 15 metres out. Chisholm, Meredith, Walker's coming up fast. That's Walker on the inside, calls on Krillich. He dummies away to win shuttle, runs into trouble, gets his pass away from Booth, out to Jimmy C. And he's in the uh. touch. He took the corner flag. And Cronulla sending a replacement out. That's Steve Hansard going on for Cronulla. Here's the replay. I don't think there's any doubt in the wide world this touch judge was right. Clever play by Max Krilishi, wasn't it? The way he dummied and stepped. He held up in the tackle but got his pass away. And uh, Quick pass by Simon yeah, Booth. Yeah, quick thinking there by Gartner. Oh, by G, I don't know. G. <laughs> Heavens above, I don't know. No, about I think that. he had the ball down first. I think he has. I would like to see that head on. Uh, and undoubtedly... We'll get that opportunity. Uh, exclusively to 10, but... Unfortunately, you people will be seeing it, and I can't see it. Two grand finals. Cronulla have been to the cricket ground to contest, and both times turned away disappointed by Manly. Penalty to Cronulla. Collapsing scrum.
Dane Sorensen finding the touchline 10 meters out from the quarter Greg Pierce receiving attention in the background Aussie Welsh will play the ball to Pearson inside Cox Greg Cox trying to split them it's 10 meters his own side of the halfway Hansard Rick Burke well tackled well tackled there by Steve Cray just as the big fullback was looking dangerous Hansard's pass taken by Kurt Sorensen referee Gosha says play on rightly so a few meters on the manly side of the halfway the ball will be played back to Barry Pearson Steve Hansard Khan Burke's coming up hard Khan can't get the pass away that's good tackling by Manly to smother these big men up. Dane Sorensen. And so a scrum just on the Manly side of the halfway mark with the score line. Manly 17, Cronulla 11. Nine minutes from full. The Tooth Cup, Wednesday night, 8.30 on 10. Canterbury Bankstown versus Cronulla Sutherland at Leichhardt Oval in television's richest league competition. You'll see four quarters of exciting action on League Station 10 as Cronulla try to avenge their first round defeat to stay in the running for the quarterfinals. The Bulldogs challenge the Sharks and the winner takes $6,000 prize money and retain a chance to play in the final on August 20. It all happens on the Tooth Cup this Wednesday night at 8.30 on League Station 10. Clean heel, Cronulla's ball, Mullane, Cox, Gardner juggled and uh, held by C and Gardner. It's Cox pinches five meters. Tackle was Ray Brown. Pearson is acting halfback. Dane Sorensen. Ian Thompson coming in and driving the prop forward to the ground. Hansard. Pierce cuts out Gardner, goes to Burke. And Burke is being ridden into the ground by Meredith. 11 metres out from the 22. Hansard. Kurt Sorensen trying to brush the tackles aside. He'll play the ball just out from the uh, Manly 22. A converted try, and this match would come to a tremendous finish. Barry Pearson! He's got the... Oh, he's got it out to Burke. Burke pops it back to Hansard. Hurdles the fallen players, and Hansard is uh, tackled 10 metres from the line. <laughs> you certainly nearly got that try that you just about uh, predicted, didn't you? Well, it's still there. Keys well, with you a were chance. Calling for, that's right. Head on uh, oh, ground shot of Ian Thompson, a very tired Ian Thompson, as the referee calls timeout for a injured Cronulla hooker, Barry Pearson. Cronulla needing it so badly. They're down six points. They've won it. Hansard run around with Pierce, and Hansard runs into a brick wall picked up in cover and plays it back to Greg Cox Rick Burke Greg Mullane Scott Dudman loses his footing 12 meters out right in center field Greg Pierce calling for it swings it to Greg Cox it's a swarm of seagulls out there to meet him though 12 meters out from the line now back across the paddock to the right running as Dane Sorensen up five meters out from the line I think they might need Kurt Sorensen in just a little bit tighter he's just getting in the edge of the ruck now Right, so let's watch it. Going from dummy half is Barry Pearson. He's two metres short of the line. And this is the last tackle coming up now. Hansard is the player to watch. That's him with the ball. Rocket-like passing along the back line. And Kurt Sorensen hits the, ball, hits the line, gives it to Gardner. And he's tackled five metres out on the sixth. Oh, this is exciting stuff, <laughs> Keith Barnes. It certainly is. You've got to give uh, Manny a lot of credit, haven't you? It's a very gutsy performance by those forwards, of course. Uh, it, it's been talked about that Terry Randall was the one that provided the stiffening in that pack and it must have been a great blow to the to the Sea Eagles when Randall was forced to withdraw this morning but uh, to their credit the Manly boys have uh, certainly given everything for, the, for their side out there this afternoon so it's in there and it's a Manly ball yes it is and Rick Chisholm gets it away to Paul Vorton and Vorton is tackled this match uh, this, this day of football at Brookvale has been laced with excitement from the time the under 23s came to its uh, close the 23s went to manly 8-3 but would you believe cronulla dived in adjacent to the uprights right on full time to lose the ball across the line 
it would have certainly been a drawn result in the 23s. So there's been excitement here right through the day, and the fans have really got their money's worth if they came to get excitement football. Mooney now, set it, uh, settling it, just steadying it down, realising that the clock has now rolled on to five minutes to go. And a scrum to form just outside the Manly 22. Ross Winchardl, he's done his job well at fullback, Ross Winchardl. Yes, he certainly has. Uh, both fullbacks have uh, performed very creditably. Rick Burke uh, has had a top game, looking to chain into the attack at every opportunity, whereas Winchardl has been uh, particularly safe, and uh, he's also made good run when he's coming and um, linked up into the back lane. But as far as the Manly side are concerned, of course, well, all the honours to young Chisholm. Oh, gee, I tell you what, Max Krelich has got to get some marks out of this win today for Manly. That's if they do win, and it certainly seems they will. Let's have a look at this now. It's 11-4, the scrum count, Keith. 11-4. Mooney just going in there as captain, and as one of the more experienced players, like this man, Krelich, and they're quite happy just to... Well, if you can close six-tackle football up, that's what they're doing. Brown, Fortin. I don't think anybody's going to complain if they play negative football now. They're entitled to. It's been a great match, my opinion, anyway. Chisholm still hungry to, to do a touch of the light. Fantastic. Rick Burke. That's Tony Graham. Splitting them. Oh, straight up the centre. Still going in number 18. Came on as a replacement early in the match for Gavin Miller. Great run. Greg Mullane. Cronulla, they will not lie down. Just outside the 22 now. They play up to Pierce. Across to Hansard. A short ball to Kurt Sorensen. Still on the 22 way. Manley's in. Hansard, Cox, Dane Sorensen. Up and at him. Through the tackle. Here comes Rick Burke on the inside. But he can't get the pass away. No, he could have in the first instance, though. So the big man from Cronulla plays it back to Burke. It's out with Cox. Now Mullane. Mullane stepping off his right foot. Getting it back to Cox. A quick ball away to Hansard. Then away to Burke. Then on goes on to Mullane. Uh, to Gardner. I beg your pardon. Out to Paul Kahn. Kahn turns it back. Oh, and well taken. taken in beautifully by Burke. Last tackle for Cronulla Sutherland. Nine metres out from the line. It's gone to Hansard. He puts the bomb up on the air. And that is going down across towards... Oh, coming through Greg Pierce. He's held up. He was in there to score, but they held him up. And he plays it. It's out with Cox. Cox out to Kurt Sorensen. Steps and plunges across oh, yes. to score. <clears throat> but I thought Keith I called yes, he six did. tackles back there. Yes, he did. When um, Hansard put the bomb up, but it was uh, <laughs> the six tackle had been well, called. Well, there it is. Well, there is uh, no doubt what the crowd is booing about. I'm sure I called last tackle coming up on that tackle there. And uh, there's no way in the world Manly have touched the ball. No. So, uh, though the try's been awarded, well, let's watch it again before we shoot our mouths off, but up they go. And there was no indication from the referee that the tackle count should be restarted. So the kick is unsuccessful. And 17 points to 14 is the scoreline, no matter what uh, has happened in the meantime. I think there's about two minutes, just over two minutes left for play. Oh, this crowd very, very hostile. I'm sorry, just over a minute. Just over 60 seconds remaining. The crowd very irate. Uh, the tackle playing the ball now midway between the 22 and the halfway. Dane Sorensen. Nine metres his side of halfway. 17, 14 seconds, just ticking away. Greg Mullane, a short ball to Ozzie Welsh. Down the touchline and picked up by Rick Chisholm. Chisholm making the tackle. What were you saying there? I was telling him to put it up in the air. <laughs> oh, there's the siren, it's all over. Oh, what a game of rugby league. It had everything. Controversy, brilliant tries. The crowd giving a hostile... Uh, Reception to referee John Gosher, but the hero of the day is down in there somewhere, Rick Chisholm, and he'll be our man of the match, and we'll talk to him in just a moment. What a sensational game. I've already told you that Rick Chisholm is our man of the match. Uh, I'll talk to him in just a moment. 
but uh, Manly 17, Cronulla 14 in a sensational game of rugby league. It had everything. It's controversial moments. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable moments in, uh, in the case of Rick Chisholm and Manly winning the match by three points with uh, Max Krillich winning the scrums 11-4 uh, for his side. The penalties finished at 14 all. The crowd nearly 9,500 and I would imagine 9,500 very satisfied rugby league fans. Joe Hasham to tell you about the Man of the Match award and then back to talk to the young genius from Manly, Rick Chisholm. Rick Chisholm, congratulations. That's a lovely prize for you. Thanks very much, Roy. Did you ever dream that you'd one day come off Brookvale Oval, having played 80 minutes of first grade football, scoring all the points? No, I never, never dreamed of it. Never, you know, playing junior football is a lot different, but I never dreamed of doing that in first grade. Were you, were you aware out there of what you were doing for this crowd down here? They went berserk. Have a listen to my voice. No, mate, I was just aware of that there were 13 blokes on the paddock and it took every one of us to win, you know, and uh, even though the points were there, it still took 13 of us to get that, the two points home. What about the drop goal, though? You're 21 years of age and five points in front and you thought, well, maybe six would be better for us and you just sort of put it over there with a the minimum of fuss. Yeah, well, uh, I think five points isn't as good as six, you know. Six points is a better lead, especially with ten minutes to go. And uh, came from the captain, you know, to put one over again, so that's the way it went. Well, Rick Chisholm, you've absolutely, you've absolutely flattened them today. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Uh, and you've won this magnificent prize from Electronic Sales and Rentals and National. Thanks very much. You enjoy it. You deserve it. Uh, thanks a lot. That's Rick Chisholm. 21-year-old boy from Manly who today scored 17 out of 17 and kept the Sea Eagles flying high at the top of the Premiership table over Cronulla Sutherland today.